Good. So, um, yeah, good morning and uh, thank you very much for joining this talk and uh, thank you very much for Luke and the whole team for organizing um, this room. Um, I'm going to talk about uh, continuous integration for open hardware projects where I have to say uh, we are not really the experts. I'm like a little bit trying to describe uh, where we are now and uh, I'm happy to get um, also information from you guys and um, any questions that we could work on together. So, um, my name is uh, Mario. I'm from Germany, but I stayed uh, 10 years in Asia. And uh, uh, yeah, we had a lot of projects in Asia, uh, but we felt a little bit cut off from the community, right? I mean, like Fostem is here and everyone just coming. And, but like in Asia, like at that time, 10 years ago, um, we felt a bit uh, that uh, uh, things are going on everywhere else and we don't meet the people that we usually meet in Europe. So what we thought is like, uh, we like force free and open source software and like mm -hmm. hardware as well, right? And uh, we need an event. So we started Force Asia 10 years ago and uh, at events people meet and have uh, ideas and then we say, oh yeah, let's open a Git repository and 10 years later suddenly you produce hardware. So uh, that's the story in short and um, yeah, then of course like I'm from Europe so I also started a company here in um, Berlin, it's uh, called Open Tech, and uh, yeah, we are running uh, projects together also with European partners, uh, for example, like uh, within the Horizon 2020 uh, program, so we're always happy to um, make open hardware sustainable also economic, uh, economically, and uh, yeah, I like languages, that's I, why I like to go to different conferences, and uh, I like international music, so it's like really cool uh, opportunity. So I want to uh, tell you first a bit like what we are doing, uh, what projects we are uh, doing in regards to hardware. Uh, so we have the Pocket Science Lab project that started 2014, and it's a project that, um, yeah, that I can give it a round actually. So um, um, it's, a, it's a project for measurement tools. So the idea is to have many um, measurement tools in one. And there's also an app on the App Store which you can check out. Uh, we have many just to, uh, integrated uh, components. We have a desktop app. Um, so that's pretty cool. And it sells well in Japan already. So how it works here, you connect basically a device to the um, uh, mobile phone, for example, Android, unfortunately, iOS is not supported. I think many people know the problems with Apple. It's not so easy, actually, always to connect something to, to Apple. And um, then what you can do is, for example, you have these different tabs, and behind each tab, there is an instrument, for example, an oscilloscope. So uh, something cool that happened recently, people said, actually, we can also use that for robotics. So we had this idea that there are robotic arms they can go into different angles and you can drag and drop, uh, for example, an angle into a timeline here. So, um, yeah, getting into robotics as well. And here are a few instruments um, that are on the device. So apart from oscilloscope, we have a multimeter, logic analyzer, wave generator, power source, accelerometer and more. And uh, I don't know if I said it at the beginning, of course, it's all open hardware, right? I mean, we don't control the chip, but like I think like in this track, it's clear that we are talking about open hardware. Another thing that we are doing is this chip, uh, sorry, this batch. So this batch is not open yet, but we are working on it. Um, the first step was that um, like there was this uh, guy on the internet. Um, he uh, uh, basically reverse engineered the protocol and based on his hack, we were able to do an open source app already. Looks like this. It's also like just like type into your phone, so that's the, that's the first step, and we're really getting excited to, to do more here as well. So you can save and export clips, you can draw um, uh, on the badges, something that we do. And the third project that we're doing um, currently is the Neurolab. There are already other projects like OpenBCI. I don't know, is anyone here from OpenBCI? No. And there are also a project that is called Braindrino. Basically, the idea is that uh, you can uh, collect your brain waves. And then you can analyze them. For example, um, it's relatively uh, yeah, clear already if you want to, for example, know focus or relaxation, things like that um, is already possible. And then it's the same model as with the Pocket Science Lab. We make an app and you can basically do it. So, um, yeah, so what we are doing is we are already producing hardware. The Pocket Science Lab is on sales and I'm uh, sharing a bit how we um, are trying to get better in development. And so our idea was to um, yeah, use continuous integration, uh, many know it from software, and uh, it's like out there since the 90s, 
and continuous integration has been developed with the objective to reduce integration time and to, continue, uh, to provide continuous software updates. Yeah, so builds, okay. And uh, yeah, continuous integration of software today. So you could build and test after each integration um, in a continuous cycle of builds. So for example, uh, you make a pull request and then you can um, basically test, does your pull request work? This is in software. Um, so the goal is that integration becomes kind of a non-event. It's just like going on and it's always clear that, uh, uh, yeah, that pull request or that merge request that will work. Um, yeah, and cycles are developing, building, compilation, executing automated test and inspections. And continuous integration, you could also say um, continuous deployment could be part of that. So you deploy the software um, automatically, um, right, for example, on a server, um, like yeah, Google and so on have made it uh, very easy to do that with a cloud, but we don't always want to be on the Google Cloud with our software. So it's also possible to do that with scripts. There are other solutions to do this as well, like so continuous integration, continuous deployment. So usual development workflow in Force Asia. Um, so in Force Asia projects. So we have around 200 repositories and like uh, more than 4,000 people registered on our GitHub, right? But we all know big names. People come and go and then don't unregister. They just stay and of course we're happy to keep everyone connected. So whenever t somebody tells you big numbers, uh, take it with a, how do you say in English, grain of salt, right? So but like um, we have a, a merge pull request um, on average every 15 minutes. And uh, so that's kind of a good thing already. And uh, this is our workflow. So at first, uh, um, function or feature or bug is uh, solved uh, or developed um, in the developer workspace. So how we are working, we don't have feature branches. Like, uh, we, because like we, what we had in the past, we also tried that out with feature branches and so on. And uh, uh, then like some developer like gets a job or has something else to do and disappears. And we have like 40 feature branches and we're losing track. And then somebody says, oh yeah, I have, I'm working on this feature. No, no, somebody else works on this feature, but like it's not taken care for months. And you know, so we said like, look, it's great if people contribute, but like um, it's a lot of overhead to take care of like what is actually going on in all these different projects. So what we say is people work in their own workspace. They um, make a, uh, their own branch and their own uh, repository. And when they are ready, they can then um, make the uh, um, uh, pull request from their own um, uh, forked uh, uh, repository, yeah? So not inside the project. So, and uh, yeah, how it's then done, of course the developer uh, runs the build locally and um, solves any integration issues. Um, the pull request is finally made. And then um, we have usually like, I don't know if there's any repository where we don't have a CI tool. So let's say Travis CI or Circle CI um, we like GitHub Actions, of course, it's a cool idea, but uh, we are not sure yet um, how much integration that would be. Like, uh, like if somebody moves a repository and they don't use GitHub, does it still work with GitHub Actions and so on? So we, we are not clear. We don't want to have the, this kind of vendor lock-in. Yeah. So, so at the moment, we're still like focusing on those. And um, yeah, so tests are run. Of course, developers need to write tests. And um, yeah, if everything is good, the code is merged. And as I said, um, in some cases, automatically deployed. So how can we um, uh, transfer this idea to um, uh, uh, hardware development? So what's the difficult uh, or the difference or the similarities of um, this uh, hardware? So we have uh, configuration in hardware projects, of course. Okay, that, that's what we have. Can write that into code. Um, uh, writing and maintaining test cases, test scripts is also possible, right? I mean. Uh, hardware is not just like hardware, there's a firmware on it, there are some um, um, test cases that we could run, for example, on that as well, so uh, all this is possible. Um, uh, yeah, so you could trigger various test scenarios, you could uh, also collect metrics, yeah? um, uh, you could analyze results, uh, keep track of build logs, um, something like that, and um, yeah, we had a talk yesterday uh, of KiCad in another track, so it's also cool and what is upcoming um, in this area. Yeah, and uh, so want to go a little bit like how we are uh, doing this now with hardware. How does it work with hardware? So uh, we are producing in China. Um, I think like production in Europe is also getting better and better. 
but actually we had a lot of people who speak Chinese. So for us, it wasn't like a big gap that we need to go to a provider and, and uh, check this out. For example, this is WeTed. Um, our, uh, the, the FOSS Asia office, main office is in Singapore. So that's that international hub where people speak all kinds of different languages. And um, he is a Chinese speaker. So um, he helps us to get the hardware development done in China. And it's really important because if I ask something in English, they say yes. And if you ask in Chinese exactly the same question, they say, oh, maybe not. Yeah, so, uh, so it's, really, it's really good that we have that. And um, there are a lot of questions, I think, that we cannot go into detail now in, um, uh, here in these sessions. But I would like to um, also, like, uh, uh, I think other people are also thinking about this integration things. And there are a lot of questions coming up. For example, we have all these machines. And, like, this is not like Travis CI. And then, like, Travis CI sends the data to this machine, right, uh, for example. So, so this is something that I think is is important to talk about and uh, of course we want that needs standards that needs integration that needs APIs and it's very important that we talk about these topics here in, in the open source community because we don't want companies coming up uh, and having the same fights that we had with free and open source in the past yeah where people say patents non-standard software and so on so this is all um, uh, yeah important and we have some um, experience here uh, producing this already, so we're happy to work on you guys. So, we, um, okay, and so integration from hardware now, our wish list. So, configuration and testing should be, uh, yeah, getting easier. Yeah, and um, so when we, uh, for example, like uh, we would like to learn more what um, uh, CLI tools are out there, what are other people using, what are the things missing. For example, there's this company um, that we are uh, uh, talking to, uh, Wikifactory. Yeah, they have they have ideas. So um, and we have this consortium on the uh, European level where we like actually <laughs> collecting these questions is already a big thing. Yeah. So if you could talk to me about this, um, for example, the cre automatic creations of bomb bill of materials. Yeah, um, where you have like a list of materials and for example you have different um, different suppliers. Yeah, Farnell or others, and you can like uh, uh, upload your bill of materials and automatically see. Uh, what is the outcome, uh, what is the cost, uh, what's the cost if I order 100, and, and so on. So all these things, right? So because what we want with continuous integration, we want the same thing as software, yeah? Make a button, make a pull request, merge request, merge that, build the whole thing, make all the tests, but actually build the real device, yeah? So it can be shipped and, and merged. That would be our dream. So what do we need to, to make this happening? Um, yeah, so um, of course, we want to like learn um, how, how far can we go in a digital way. Yeah, uh, I mean, what can we solve digitally, and um, what can we do um, in regards to producing real prototype devices? You know, JLC, PCB, and so on is just so cheap, like five dollars or something, and you have you have a, um, a board already. So that's cool. So and possibly uh, automatic uh, recommendations. Why not uh, write YAML files um, and say, okay. This uh, uh, producer, for example, or this component supplier is supporting the uh, Frost community. And why not write that in the YAML file and make that a preferred producer of open hardware or something like that? I mean, all kinds of things that I could imagine to really like uh, grow the ecosystem in open source hardware. So what we see is basically in the hardware uh, uh, creation process, it's a similar cycle to software. Yeah, I mean, especially the further people are away, from uh, um, the development, I think the more they think the process is really different. But like we feel what we learned so far about like producing, creating and producing hardware is it's really similar. So you, um, for example, like so you have, have this cycle, right? You have this cycle and you orchestrate task, uh, task in, a, in a sequence um, where you then have a pipeline. You test it, uh, you, you improve it and you receive feedback and continue development on this feedback. I mean, it's really similar to um, software development. And um, so to make hardware CI possible, um, um, we, like an automation engine is like really necessary. Yeah? And uh, should, be deploy, uh, should be able to deploy. Um, I don't know. We don't have so much experience with FPGA. But I think like, uh, there's this project uh, uh, of uh, Bunny Huang and um, uh, Sean like in, in, in Singapore. And, uh, we connect with them a lot um, in, um, in Singapore, right? They're based in Singapore. We have the FOSS Asia Summit in Singapore every year. So, so that's really cool. They had this uh, small FPGA um, USB development 
um, device. So that's that's cool, but not everything is FPGA. Yeah, and not everyone knows about it. And uh, I don't know their pros and cons. So maybe we could have people who really know about this because I see some people are nodding. Yeah, maybe we can have workshops on this in future. Uh, learn more how to how to do that and develop here apart from the uh, prototypes. So um, how far are we now in this? Endeavor. So what we are doing, for example, we are creating automatic deployments using KitSpace and YAML. Um, uh, I haven't seen Kasper here at the event like he was here last year. So, um, for example, we integrated a YAML file. So KitSpace is pretty cool. It already does a lot of things what, what we need. So um, it enables an automatic uh, uh, generation um, of kind of like... Uh, uh, like a, a, a list of things to build. Maybe I just show it. It's easier to show than to, to, to talk about it maybe. And um, yeah, so on each merged uh, pull request, this YAML file is uh, executed and it connects to uh, uh, kit space and it generates a part list. Yeah, and um, yeah, and then this part list can be matched with different suppliers. So this is basically still on the level of part lists, but like, why not bring this to the next level? Like, let's say um, uh, to, to really produce the board um, and uh, to see what else we can do. So um, we have this repository here, uh, for example, of the uh, yeah, Pocket Science Lab hardware. And it's a very simple YAML file. So um, it basically tells you uh, where is the Gerber file, where are the Gerber files, and it has a link to um, Bombsheet uh, ODS, which was before uh, automatically created by KiCad. Yeah? So we are already going into this uh, uh, direction. And um, yeah, and then like this YAML file is executed, and then we have this page on the KidSpace website, and KidSpace itself is open source, right? I mean, like, that's really important for us, yeah? Um, we can always, like, there can be cool services that are not always open, and we, we use them, like, you know, GitHub itself, but, like, Git is open, and here even, like, the whole KidSpace uh, service is open, so um, they generate automatically um, these... Uh, links also, and you basically can click, then you can, for example, click uh, adjust quantity. So how many um, uh, like prototypes you want to produce, and then you can see uh, what is the price, are these components available, and you can click on any of these um, suppliers and, and, and check out and then basically order it. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I mean, it sounds really great already, but uh, yeah, the question is how, how standardized are these components lists or, always? So you still should check. You should, shouldn't just like go there, oh, yeah, Mario said that, and let me try that out. You should still check are these the real components. Like sometimes like there might be slight differences um, or, yeah, like so that's something we need to um, work on and get more, um, um, get more experience. So from continuous integration to sustainable continuous deployment, redeployment, and recyclement. Yeah? Um, ten years ago, we had this talk. Eben Molen came to Berlin. The Chaos Communication Congress was still in Berlin, and he said, uh, open hardware is the next big thing. And then there were people talking, yeah, it's really good for the environment. It's all these, uh, yeah, it's sustainable. Like it's, not like, it's right to repair and all these things. Yeah? And now, ten years later, we have this topic, and I'm like, hmm, yeah, sounds like a déjà vu. Yeah, and uh, uh, but like it's it's also an opportunity for us. So we shouldn't be tired to just repeat the conversations that we had years ago. We should really uh, try to do this. And um, this whole thing about open hardware and um, continuous integration um, could be deployment. Let's really like think into the future. It's not just like about building hard, uh, hardware. Could we also do something like deassemblement machines? Yeah, where we say uh, here are components. Um, just like you can deploy your software again on a server, could you like deassemble the, the, the hardware and, and do this, right? I mean, like it's, it's, it's not impossible, yeah? And uh, so this is, this is the thing if you if really think like everything is open and um, you have the CI, you could also have the, how to call it, yeah? Let's, let's, let's phrase, let's phrase a, a, um, a sentence and let's make it big or something. Yeah, I mean, so that you deassemble. So CI solutions um, enable us to publish a new version and devices to be produced anywhere automatically. Here, another thing, right? We can ship the, um, the final design everywhere in the world and produce it locally. I mean, we're always, always talking about small boards, but how about we talk about uh, 
cars and uh, trains and spaceships in the future. Yeah, uh, We could do all kinds of things that should all just be open. It is just like uh, necessary for sustainability. And uh, so we need machine integration to deploy full auto fully automatically. So it's a, it's, a, it's a problem, right? I mean, these machines that we see uh, before, I, I showed you the, the picture of the um, um, what, what's it called in English? I don't know. So, so where you put the reels in and you produce uh, uh, the hardware and so on, right? I mean, they are not open, yeah? I mean, I was in, in Shenzhen, not last week, so relax. <laughs> so, a while ago. <laughs> so, last year, last year, yeah. So, um, uh, right, and, and they have these machines and they tell you, wow, $20,000 and you can produce everything. Um, so I, I, I don't know, but like, right, uh, do they follow open standards? Like, what can we do here in, in, in this area that we can really plug in? We, we sent our um, uh, um, hardware design here and, and they uh, really do it. And how, how, how open can we get that? Let's work together on, on, on doing this. And this is something that we try to... Uh, also uh, push on the on the European level to have more research, right? I mean, when they have these uh, big research projects um, and, yeah, I don't know, five billion dollars, right? I mean, like, and there's just the word open hardware somewhere in this big European uh, uh, book uh, uh, that they do, right? And uh, so, it, okay, yeah, all these car manufacturers, big companies and so on, they get, like, maybe, like, most of it, but how about 200 million really for creators of open hardware companies that do that and so on. So that would be good. So let's get these, these topics also um, on a European level and um, uh, connect on this. So this is, this is important. Um, and uh, yeah, I already said we need disassembly machines. All devices could possibly be automatically be disassembled and components could be reduced or recycled. We really need to go in this direction. So continuous integration can enable us to make open hardware economically sustainable. I mean, I always see this sustainable uh, topic in regards to um, uh, the uh, ecology, but we also need it in ec economically. And um, this is something that uh, I'm trying to do. So because I know a lot of hackers and they make, yeah, they, they, they do something. And for example, we had this cool project where we hack the knitting machine and IAP and we collaborate and so on, right? But then the project is done. And, and they're happy, we achieved the goal, so let's move on to another project. So it's not really about like changing the fashion industry, make it it's, it, into a circular economy or something like that. And that's something that I would like to do. Really like um, work with people together on, um, on the missing parts and pieces to make this um, possible. And it all needs to be open because if I don't have time, somebody else should be able to continue the work that, uh, that we are doing. So, um, and of course, like, uh, this whole process makes uh, development um, uh, more reliable and, and faster by automating parts. So, uh, right, I mean, we have all these, these problems with, with the environment and so on, but like maybe could we also solve these problems faster? I mean, it takes seven years to um, get like from design to really like creating a car. Uh, could we shorten this process? Yeah, by automating uh, these um, uh, integration processes even on, 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 on a really big, big level and could be lower costs. Yeah, I mean, that's all like kind of, I think like people nodding here, of course we can know a lower cost uh, by, by uh, um, doing this automatically. And uh, we can uh, speed up regular updates and support the building of a developer and user community which cannot be copied. Yeah, I mean, people always say like we had this talk this morning of the uh, um, of, of, of Chris and so on. Um, it, it can't be copied, copied, and we need uh, um, we need the community, right? I mean, you can always copy hardware, you can uh, copy software, but you cannot copy a community that's dedicated. So um, this is uh, impossible. So where to get the hardware? By the way, that we are that I showed at the beginning, you can just go to Force Asia. You can of course. Um, uh, download all of it. Um, some people say, oh, it's not really open. Uh, the chip is not open. Yeah, unfortunately, we are not that far, but I know many people here working on this and uh, you can order it everywhere. And of course, you can collaborate with us. You can, if you have a company or something, you can talk to us um, if there are any ways uh, to, to share um, like uh, experience and uh, maybe do workshops, uh, meet us on the project chats. We have a few hundred people there. And um, so it's, it's really cool to connect. And uh, here are the chances to connect, for example. So the FOSS Asia Summit is in Singapore uh, from March 19 to 21. Uh, we also have like a KiCad dev room on Sunday when we have the dev sprints. So that's cool um, if you're able to come. 
And the Open Tech Summit Community Day in Berlin is on May 21. So would love to see you guys there. Thank you very much for joining. So, so how's the time? I think there's no time for questions. Is there time? I oh, know. Yeah. Okay. Good. So just come to me. By the way, there's a Force Asia stand on the um, on the second floor or first floor. Depends on from which country you come and where you how you calculate, right? So it's not on the ground floor. It's one floor up. Yes. Right. Thank you very much. Uh, okay. So because I forgot to.